From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ansel Garrett, Johnny. I was out when you phoned a minute ago. Ants, get over here fast. Well, what's the matter? I'm trapped in the office of Jensen's Boathouse. You're trapped? Look, I've got no time to explain. There's a man outside with a gun, and I can't hold him off much longer. Who is it? I don't know, but I've got a strong hunch it's the one who murdered Russell. And he's trying to do likewise to me. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Amalgamated Life Associates, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Crystal Lake matter. Expense account continued. Item seven, two cents. Just about what I figured my life was worth at the moment. The tiny office I was in had no windows and no outside door. A real trap. And outside in the darkened boathouse, somebody with a gun was stalking me. Probably the killer I'd been looking for. But now he was looking for me. I stacked what furniture there was against the door. He started throwing his weight against it, and it couldn't last very long. There was nothing I could do but wait. Right then, the sound of Ants Garrett's voice outside was just about the sweetest music this side of heaven. Drop the gun! Drop it! You okay, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, just a minute. I'll get this stuff away from the door. Okay. Light switch here somewhere. There. Well... Bill Jensen. So you're my boy, Jensen. What are you talking about? What are you doing here anyway, Dollar? Getting shot at by you, mostly. Look, this is my boathouse, remember? You got no business to come prowling around here. Now simmer down, Bill. Simmer down. I thought he was a prowler, Ants. Oh, yeah, sure. You knew I was getting close to you, Jensen. You decided to put me out of the ball game, and you came pretty close, believe me. I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. I figured it was somebody after my boat again. expect me to buy a hold story now, like that? Just hold it a second, both of you. If I can get a word in edgewise around here, maybe we can straighten things out. They're pretty straight right now, as far as I can see. Maybe. Bill, you claim you figured Johnny was a prowler trying to steal something, huh? How would you figure it, Ants? I see somebody sneaking into the boathouse and catch a glimpse of somebody else hanging around outside. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody else who? Man or woman? I couldn't tell. Whoever it was got out of sight mighty fast. Oh, sure. Pretty convenient story, Jensen. Somebody around here has been keeping an eye on me right from the start. But right now, it figures to be you. Look, Dollar, I'm... Hold it, Bill! A couple of Jensen's boats have turned up missing lately, Johnny. It's natural he might think that Yeah, you... and something else has turned up missing here, too, Ants. What do you mean? That's why I came here to the boathouse tonight in the first place. When I was here this afternoon, I noticed that the padlocks on his boats were missing. One of them was missing. They looked an awful lot like the one that Russell's killer put on the cabin door when he planted the body there. A yeah, lock's a lock, Johnny. Yeah, but one of Jensen's is missing. Don't forget that. Oh? Here, come here. Take a look. Right there. Yeah. yeah. So it is. How about it, Jensen? I didn't even know it was gone. How do I know what happened to it? Somebody stole it. Probably the same guy who stole those boats last month. Look, look if you're trying to involve me in Russell's murder, you're wasting your time. I didn't even know the guy, and you got nothing to tie me into it. No? Then you better listen to a few facts, Jensen. Edward Russell took off from his home in Denver and came up here to Crystal Lake looking for a guy named Bill, which just happens to be your name. Half a dozen other bills in town, too, Dollar. Now, what does that prove? Russell's body was found in Bixby's vacant cabin when Bixby brought a prospect up to show him the place. Bixby's lock had been taken off the door and a new one put on. Your padlock, Jensen. I already told you somebody must have stolen it from Then I come around to your boathouse here to check on the locks and you start throwing shots at me. You figure it out. (laughs) You haven't got a case against me and you know it, Dollar. Just the same, Jensen. You better come down to my office with us. I got a few more questions I want to ask you. And I'd like to check your gun against the slug that killed Russell. Go ahead. Check it. Sure, I'll come down with you, Ants. I want to get this straightened out, too. But let me tell you something, Dollar. Next time you come around my boathouse without a search warrant, I won't miss. We questioned Jensen for an hour, but he didn't change his story. He kept denying any connection with the murdered man, Edward Russell, or his wife, Leona. Afterward, Ants and I went into his office. Uh, 
I don't think we got enough to hold him on, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, his gun's a different caliber than the one that killed Russell. Oh, sure, he could have used a different gun, but we'd have to find it to prove anything. Well, what about the padlock? Mm -hmm. That's a point, all right, but it's our only point. Somebody could have stolen it, like Jensen said. A frame? Could be. <laughs> Jensen sure sticks to his story. <sighs> yeah. I threw everything I could think of at him, but he didn't crack an inch. Well, after all, Johnny, you were out of line going into his boathouse like that. So I should have had a search warrant. There wasn't time. You know, you got quite a knack for stirring up trouble. If you're wrong about Jensen and the other suspects, you're going to owe a few apologies. Apologies I don't mind handing out. But Russell's killer I want. You think I don't? Deputy Sheriff Garrett speaking. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, put it through. It's Mrs. Putnam in Denver, Johnny. Wife of the man who wanted to buy Bixby's cabin. Yeah. I put a call into her earlier. Hope... You... Hello? Oh, yeah, Mrs. Putnam. This is Deputy Sheriff Garrett up at Crystal Lake. Yeah, the reason I'm calling, your husband tells us you and he had been interested in buying a cabin up here for some time. I thought I'd check with you. What's that? You sure about that? I see. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Mrs. Putnam. Well, I guess your hunches are still clicking, Johnny. She didn't know anything about it, huh? Not a thing. Didn't even know her husband was up here. Look, gentlemen, I've already told you all about it. I saw Bixby's ad in the paper about his cabin here being for sale. It, it sounded like just a thing that, that... That you and your wife had in mind, Mr. Putnam? Yes, yes, exactly. So you I... can hold it right there, Putnam. You lied to us. I most certainly did not. Your wife doesn't seem to know anything about it. Oh, my wife? Good Lord, is she up here? No, no, I talked to her on the phone. You, you, you didn't tell her about my wanting to buy the cabin. Yeah, Putnam, I did. You lied, Putnam. And there could be a pretty good reason for it. Look, I... You knew Bixby's cabin was empty. You could have planted Russell's body there and then pretended to want to buy the place so Bixby would open it up and the body would be discovered. It would make a pretty good cover for you. Oh, gentlemen, please. I'm in enough trouble as it is right now without you piling more on. I had nothing to do with Russell's murder. I didn't even know the man. What do you mean about being in trouble, then? Oh, with my wife. Look, it's probably hard for the two of you to understand... You don't know my wife. Don't know your wife? What about? I did lie about her wanting the cabin. She didn't know anything about it. We know that. I just wanted a place to, well, to get away from her once in a while. Ants looked at me, and I looked at Ants. And I guess we both had the same idea. The idea that we'd run another in a long series of blanks. We heard Putnam out a long and familiar tale of woe. We could establish no connection between him and the dead man, so we finally left. We left him in the middle of a long sentence about what his wife said to him every time he got home from the office late. Anson and I went outside. The lake was silver in the moonlight, and a million stars were crowding the sky. A good night to be young, but at the moment I was feeling 90 years old. Getting you down, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, right now I feel like an old beat-up merry-go-round. I've been going round and round, and my bearings are getting creaky. Yeah, the trouble is we've checked out just about everybody who could possibly be involved. It's motive that beats me, Ants. The only one we know of to gain by Russell's death is his wife, Leona, beneficiary of his $50,000 insurance policy. Yeah, but the Denver police established her in Denver at the time Russell was killed up here. Yeah, she couldn't have done it. We've got only one more lead as far as I can figure the guy who drives the local taxi here at the lake. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He keeps his car right over there in that shed. I know. That's why I was heading this way. Shed's empty, though. Benny Norton told me when she was with Russell the night he got killed, this Hiram came up and told Russell somebody was looking for him, drove him away. Well, Hiram could have a line on the killer. But I can't seem to get a line on Hiram. I've tried to call him half a dozen times. I've left a message for him to contact me, but I haven't had a word from him. I don't like it. Our boys are looking for him. No sign yet. <sighs> well, we're not getting anywhere right now. Hey, look, if you're off duty, Ants, I'll buy you a drink in the hotel. Room. I am, and you got a deal. 
course, there's one possibility been in the back of my mind all along, Johnny. Yeah, probably in yours, too. You mean the killer could be somebody we don't even know about, a stranger? Yeah. Yeah, those are the toughest ones to crack. I know. Hmm. Lobby's kind of crowded tonight. We're getting into busy season. Mr. Dollar. Hey, it's Leona Russell. Excuse me a minute, Anne. Meet you in the bar. You're right. Good evening, Mrs. Russell. I didn't know you were still here. I'm leaving in the morning. The sheriff asked me to come up here and make an identification of the body. I know. Afterward, I just couldn't seem to get myself organized. I took one of the hotel cottages for a day or two. Such a peaceful spot up here. It's hard to believe. Yes, that... I understand. Uh, Mrs. Russell, your husband came up here apparently looking for a man named Bill. I've questioned two Bills so far, Cullen the bartender and Jensen the boatkeeper. Those names mean anything to you? Not that I recall. <laughs> That's what's so terrible about this whole thing, Mr. Dollar. There just doesn't seem to have been any connection between anybody up here and my husband. Why would anyone have done it? That's a good question, Mrs. Russell. And right now, we don't seem to have an answer for it. I went into the bar, but Ann's Garrett was nowhere in sight. The bartender told me he'd been called away. Expense account item eight, 75 cents, one drink. I waited. Still no Garrett. After a while, I went on in back of the hotel to check on Hiram's taxi cab. Nothing. The message I'd left him was still there. I went back into the bar, but Ants didn't show up. Finally, I went up to my room. Johnny Dollar. Ants Garrett, Johnny. Oh, hi. I tried to call you in the bar just now. They told me you'd gone to your room. I got tired waiting for you. Sorry, I got hauled away on official business. I'm calling from a gas station up near the three-mile grade. Trouble? Plenty. Johnny, seems like when you go looking for people, it always turns out to be bad luck for them. What do you mean? You came up here looking for Russell. He turned up dead. Now you've been looking for Hiram, the taxi driver. Don't tell me. Afraid so. We just fished his body out of a ravine. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the wind-up, the payoff. A payoff with illegal tender. Hot lead. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.